Could you kind of describe some of the other relationships that you had with business partners that didn't work out so well and the reasons that they didn't? Lots of reasons. I, I, th- I think, okay, so the first people I partnered with in the agency space, um, well, the very first person I partnered with in the agency space just was, we were young and we were like aligned in the fact we wanted to start an agency, but we had very different ideas. And I think we both had a little bit of an ego. Um, egos are not good in business partnerships because you want to be right more than you want to win. Um, so I think from both sides, that was a disaster. Then I think the second big partnership was at the very start of Digital Knockout, it was me and two other guys who I'm still boys with. They're my brothers. They're great people, but not great to do business with in the sense that there were three of us and we were 33% each. One person had money. Fantastic. We love money. Money is great for starting a business, right? But the business didn't need money. So like, what is he contributing to this enterprise? Nothing other than being boys, right? So like he, he didn't actually contribute any value for a third of the business. Then the other partner and I had similar skill sets. So we we're doing the same thing in the business, but there were two of us. Um, so that was just like, there's, there's two of us when there only needs to be one of us. If you had two people who were both really good at running Facebook ads, but you only need one person to run Facebook ads, not a great situation, right? So it just dynamic wise wasn't, wasn't what we needed from each other. And I think that was a bit of a mess. We also had different views around money. So like, I'm very, very conservative when it comes to like business money in terms of like spending it in terms of saving it in terms of, I want to operate the highest possible margin. So we've got a high cash flow business that that's super profitable. And one of my business partners is more of a, I'm going to America to have a meeting let me book first class so it's a little bit more comfortable. And I'm like, maybe we don't need to spend $20,000 on flights right now. So we had just different perspectives on how we operated with money in the business. He thought it was like fake money or something. Um, so that was not great either. Um, so yeah, I've had a few different bad business partnerships, but I don't think it was because they were bad people. I think it just wasn't what we needed from each other. How do you navigate bad relationships? Oh, it's not bad relationships. How do you navigate that situation with the the people that you consider really close friends, but you have that business struggle between you, right? Like how, how does that impact your relationship with them? And like, has it had any like long-term effects on your relationship? Um, since like going separate ways or were you just like hey i'm gonna buy you out let's cut ties or did, did they fight back and be like oh no i actually want to stay in the business or like what, what how does that go there, there, there was there was layers to the drama um long term it's had zero impact long term it's been fine um in the short term it was it was still reasonably fine because the guy that had the money that was like bringing money to the equation um he doesn't really care about the money. Like it's inconsequential to him. Mm. So he was kind of like able to mediate the whole situation as someone who just didn't really, like he didn't, he didn't need a buyout. He didn't care about the money side of it. He was mm. just like, how do we make this a simple, smooth transition? And he kind of mediated the whole thing to keep it smooth. Um, and like short term, there was some friction. There was some whatever. Um, but long term, it's been 100% fine. Cool. So it's like you've got good friends then. <laughs> They're good. They, they're, they're good guys. They're very good guys. And I think that like the, one of the other big aspects to it all, and this isn't super common in business is that like, none of us wanted bad things for each other, right? Like we weren't trying to like claw back shares unfairly. He wasn't trying to like hold on to them and stay in the business because fuck you, give me my, my payout or whatever. Like we all kind of, we all wanted to not do the wrong thing by each other. It wasn't like a big falling out and a whole bunch of yelly conversations about fuck you, no, fuck you. No, you got to give me this. It wasn't like that. It was much more like what's the fair thing so that nobody's getting shafted here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess the mindset behind like a separation like that is super important because yeah. it's like that, that game um, where it's like steal or, or split, right? <laughs> as long as everyone clicks split, then you're good, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, regarding, regarding failures, mistakes or missteps, um, what have you experienced and how could
could they then be avoided by someone else um, looking to climb the ladder? Mistakes and missteps. Bad partnerships. That took us a lot of time <laughs> and money. Um, honestly, I wouldn't not make the mistakes I made. I don't know who it was that said this, but there's an expression in business which is fail fast. I'd make all the same mistakes and, st and then some, but I'd make them faster. Because if you can like make mistakes repeatedly, that's how you learn. It doesn't matter what kind of advice people have given me about things that I was about to go through. I'd still make the mistake. I just wish I made them faster so I could learn from it and get out the other side. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't not make most of the mistakes. I'd just make them faster. Okay. That's interesting advice. What what are what are some specifically that you're you're thinking of? The partnership one was one. Um, yeah. Bad clients was another. Um, through all the client work we were doing, we'd often hold on to bad partnerships for money. Um, there was one in particular that was really just a volatile human being. Like he was very erratic, very whatever as a as a client but he was like half of that client book. He was paying us back in the day. He was paying us like six, $700,000 a year um, mm -hmm. as a single client. And it didn't matter to me how bad it was for the whole team to manage him as a client, how bad it was internally in terms of hours and struggles and getting calls at 11 PM on a Sunday with him screaming at us type stuff. Um, we'd always kind of shrug it off and be like, well, as long as he pays his invoice next month, which he sometimes did. Um, that whole sort of side of things where it's like, it's, it's usually not worth it. Um, so I'd, I'd make less decisions based on money. Mm. So the next one is consistency. We, well, I at every single stage of this have had really bad shiny object syndrome. Um, so like jumping from poker into drop shipping into SMA into I need to learn sales into I need to do another SMA to I need to, you know, go work at a high priced agency. And then I went to our agency and while we were in our agency, we tried launching e-com products and brands. We've done scale smart. Like we just jump around a whole bunch from idea to idea. Um, if we had put our head down and stuck with the agency from day one and being consistent with the agency without all the distractions, it would be much, much bigger and more successful than it is. Um, but we kept getting distracted and burnt out, but distracted. Um, and something that we always neglected was sales and revenue before everything else. Like we would often go on like a little sales sprint where lock in, I would smash sales, get all these new clients, whatever. And then we just kind of like stop selling for six months and like, work on delivery, work on systems, work on processes, work on team, all these different things. And over that time, because of churn, our revenue would start to like decline. And then we're like, oh shit, we're running out of money. We've got to go on a big sales rush again. And we've gone on this big sales sprint and we bring it back up. Um, but we've got much better focus on that sort of stuff now. So again, like I, I don't regret making these mistakes. I just wish we'd made them faster so we could have expedited the process to get to where we are.